Hey guys, if you're a business owner or a bookkeeper who deals with large volumes of charges that's billable to your clients, this tutorial will help you a lot. Now, we've seen a lot of complaints when it comes to billable expenses in QBO. Apparently, QBO has been getting a lot of complaints like this and this and this but it's 2024 now and nothing much has really changed now don't get me wrong the billable expense feature really works well in QBO except when it comes to reporting now in this video I'm gonna show you the limitations QuickBooks online has and I'm gonna offer a solution that's gonna solve around 90% of your problem so let's get into it <music> All right, so let's talk about the limitations. Now, you wouldn't really struggle so much when it comes to processing the billable expense transactions. It's all here, and it's quite easy to do. But when it comes to generating uh, reports for your billable expenses, this is usually where uh, most of the clients we've had would get so much headaches because um, there are a lot of limitations when it comes to generating reports specifically for billable expenses. Now, I have here a bunch of uh, sample transactions and all of these are billable to uh, uh, our sample clients. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click on reports. And in the, uh, the, the search bar, the only report QuickBooks bothered to put in here as a, as a built-in report is the unbilled charges. All right. So this is the only thing you'd get. So when you click on this report, uh, all right, so it's going to show you, it's going to show you, a list of all of your billable expenses that has not yet been billed to your clients right so ideally when you when you look at reports like this inside QBO or any other softwares you would want to be able to see all of your billable expense transactions under three three different stages and what I mean by that is uh, you need to have a report that's going to show you all of your expenses that are not billable uh, the expenses that is unbilled or yet to be billed to the customers and the expenses that has been billed to the customers. Unfortunately, in QBO, we only have unbilled charges report. Uh, we would be able to customize a report for your non-billable expense transactions, but we wouldn't get uh, the billed transactions report. I'm going to show you something real quick. Uh, if I open this expense, and we go to the expense window and this expense uh, we're actually attempting to to build this specific expense to Antonio Sillery. now when you start creating an invoice then you go to the plus new button and you click on invoice and when you call the customer in here uh, a drawer on the right side of your screen is going to pop up and it will show you all of the charges that you can bill to Antonio Siliri. Now, once you add certain um, charges to this invoice and you click on save and close, I'm not going to do that yet because I need the, the list for illustration purpose. But what's going to happen is those two charges will just disappear from this report and it's, it's actually, the, the data is actually lost and we wouldn't be able to generate a report for all of the charges that has been billed to the clients. Uh, that's one of the limitations, unfortunately. All right, so here's the solution. Instead of going for the unbilled charges built-in report, uh, you try to search this. Uh, let me just go back to the report list. And in the search bar, try to search transaction list by date. Okay, so you open this report. And we're going to customize this report so we will be able to use this for billable charges. All right, so I'm just going to switch to Classic View because that's what I'm used to. And I'm going to uh, filter this. I'm going to use all dates. Okay, and then I'm going to run report. And then we're going to go to the customize section. All right, so first things first, we have to adjust the filters. Okay, so I'm going to click on filters and then in the transaction type uh, field, find billable expense charge so this is the only one you're gonna choose okay and then you're gonna have to run report so it's gonna show you it's gonna show you all of the billable charges regardless of of the stages they're in all right now we need to have an indication that the expense has been billed to the clients 
All right, so I'm going to go back to the customize section and then under change columns, I'm going to choose invoice date, right? And again, I'm going to move this field right next to the date column. All right, so I'm just going to run report and we'll have the invoice date in here. And once you build the charges, once you create an invoice and use one of these billable charges on the invoice, the invoice date of that billing would appear in here. And that's the only indication that the specific um, expense has been billed to the customer already. All right now, we're going to customize the fields, the columns in here. And I want you guys to follow exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so I want you guys to uh, adjust the columns under a specific sequence. All right, I, I, this is very important because there's another solution to this um, report at the end of the video, and this matters a lot. So I'm gonna go back to customize, and we're gonna go to uh, the, the columns, and then I'm gonna put the date first, the invoice date next. The next would be transaction type. The next would be split. Okay. And um, the number column, I'm, we're not going to be, gonna be using that. And the next one would be posting and then the description, the memo or description. All right. And then the name. We'll be using the name for our, our customer, customer account column. All right. So the next field would be amount. I'm sorry, account. Account and then amount and then... I'm sorry, posting would be next to split. And then we have amount and then locations. I'm going to explain at the end of the video why we need locations, all right? So I'm just going to run report, and there you go. Now, let's do a sample. I'm, I'm going to save this first. Uh, I'm going to name this uh, all billable charges. Okay, I'm going to save this one. And I'm going to duplicate my window. All right, so I'm going to go back to the report list and open the uh, unbuild build charges. All right, so again, all of the things you see on the list are unbuild charges. I'm going to open one expense. All right, so we will be billing this to yeah, Antonio Siliri. So I'm going to close this one and create an invoice. And then I'm going to choose Antonio Siliri in here. All right, and then I'm going to add this one and this one, and I'm going to uh, save this invoice. Save and close. Now, yeah, when you go back to the unbuilt charges, those two charges are now excluded from the list. So it's not here anymore. But when you go to the all billable expense report that we just customized, um, I'm going to refresh this window first and you'll see that the invoice date will appear. So we have these two transactions already built to Antonio Siliri and we have invoice date. So this is the only indication that um, the two transactions we worked on are already built to the customer. Now, this isn't final because we need we still need to customize this. There are a lot of filtering functions that are essential. Uh, on reports like this, but we couldn't find it here in, in, in reports. So we're going to have to find other solutions to do it. All right. Now let's talk about how to further enhance this report. So I'd like to talk about five of the most essential um, filtering functions we need to have so that we can view the report from different angles. Because when you're working on large volumes of transactions like this, uh, or even more, it, it would be much more difficult to isolate and sort the data without the proper tools. So let's try to see how many out of the five filtering functions would be possible inside QBO. All right, so here are the five filtering functions we need to have. First is the date filter. Second would be the customer account filter. Third would be the billing status filter. Uh, fourth would be the description search. And the last filtering function would be the dollar range. All right, so let me walk you through each of these filtering functions one by one. And I'm going to explain to you why these are very essential when running reports like this inside uh, the system. And let's also try to find out whether or not we could possibly have all of these filter functions inside 
QuickBooks Online, right? So let's start with the first one, date filters. So the date filters would actually enable us to um, to run the report based on the date parameters that you chose. So I'm talking about the start and end date. So all you really have to do is go to the uh, date parameter section and choose custom. So uh, by default, you're all you're on all dates. You go to custom and then you'll have the starting date and the end date. So date filter function possible inside QuickBooks Online. So let's move to the next one. The next one would be customer account filter. Now, you wouldn't see any customer account filter outside. So you're going to have to go to the customize uh, section and go to filters. So for, for your customer account, we're actually using the, the field called name. So it's this one. Okay. So I'm going to click on this box and I'm going to choose uh, the specific customer I want to see. So I want to, I just want to see Antonio Sileri. Okay. And then I'm going to run report. I'm sorry. So we're going to have to, for the sake of this illustration, I'm just going to go with all dates. All right. So run report and it will filter the entire report with uh, Antonio um, Sileri, the, the report that, I mean, the customer that you chose. So customer account filter is possible inside QuickBooks Online. All right, so let's move on to the next one, which is the billing status filter. So, so the billing status filter would enable us to run the report for uh, charges that is still unbilled and for charges that have already been billed to the clients. Uh, unfortunately, like I've said earlier in the video, the only indication, the only indication we have of uh, whether or not the transaction, the expense has been billed to the clients is the invoice date. All right. So if we go to the customize section and go to filters and locate the invoice date field, we wouldn't see anything in here. That simply means we cannot we cannot filter the report by billing status, unfortunately. So billing status filter not possible inside QuickBooks Online. All right, so let's move to the next one, which is the description search. So the description search will help us uh, locate certain expenses using text, basically. And it would be very helpful, especially in cases where you're missing some expenses, you're missing some transactions, and you want to figure out whether or not they have been tagged as billable and also whether or not they were billed to the clients. Uh, now, in QuickBooks Online, unfortunately, we cannot do that because, I mean, the description field is not one of the fields uh, that are in the filter options. So we cannot filter uh, the report using description. So the description search, not possible in QuickBooks Online. All right, so the last filtering function would be the dollar range. So if you want to filter the entire report, by using uh, a minimum dollar amount and a maximum dollar amount for your range. Uh, also, we cannot do that inside QuickBooks Online because the dollar range is not available on the filtering uh, section. All right, so the dollar range filter is not possible inside QuickBooks Online. All right, so in conclusion, out of the five very essential filtering functions, only two are possible inside QuickBooks Online. But don't worry because I found a solution to this. But the thing is, we're going to be using a, a special spreadsheet. So we're going to be using uh, an automated spreadsheet in Google Sheets. Now, don't hesitate to, to, to use uh, spreadsheets like this uh, to supplement your accounting system. It's completely normal and most everybody uh, in the world uh, uses that setup. So I'm going to be showing you that specific template so we can use it to uh, further enhance uh, our billable expense reports. All right, so before I show you the special Google Sheet template, let me discuss first why exactly we need locations in this setup. So locations are, are actually just special fields or tags inside QuickBooks Online that is normally used for uh, posting transactions for different departments or different branches and things like that. But we will be using it in this setup for a very unique reason. Actually, the, the reason is very simple. Uh, when looking at reports like this in, in your accounting system, you would want to be able to see what kind of expense category was used when you created that transaction. So there are different kinds of expenses. You have uh, lease, uh, rental, uh, travel expenses, cost of goods sold, 
um, etc etc you would want to be able to see it in here unfortunately that is not one of the fields that's available in the filter filtering section so we cannot use that so what I actually did is if you go to the expense and open the expense window what I did is this so if you choose cost of goods sold materials in here you will also choose cost of goods sold materials for the location because the, the location is the only field that will appear on the, the, the report that we created okay so you'd be able to you'd be able to tell what kind of expense uh, a specific charge is for all right so let's move to the Google sheet template all right, so this is the special Google Sheet template I was talking about. So it has all of the five uh, essential filtering functions I just discussed. So we have customer filter, we have uh, billing status, we have uh, start date and end date, or the date parameters. We also have description search and the, the dollar range. So you can search your your minimum and maximum dollar range. So now it's it's empty right now, but I'm gonna show you how this connects to the, the, the report that we created in QuickBooks Online. So actually, all you really have to do is go to the report that we customized inside QuickBooks Online, it's this one. We extract this into an Excel file. We post it into this um, Rock QBO data, data tab, and it will take care of everything. So let me show you how we do it. So this is the report so it's filtered to all dates and I'm gonna extract this to an Excel format all right I'm gonna open the, the report and then okay let me show you this one all right so all you have to do is copy the entire table except for the headers so you copy this okay so the entire table you control you press control C you go to the special uh, spreadsheet template, go to the raw QBO data tab, you paste it right under here. You press Control, Shift, and V. Right. Okay. And then you go back to reports, and when you open the, custom, the select customer uh, drop down button, it will show you all of the customers based on the raw data that you pasted. Okay. So you can filter between. But will basically everything so you choose Antonio Siliri and then the dates would be uh, let's say uh, January 1 to sorry December 31 and then you choose this the billing status which is uh, build all right so it's gonna show you uh, the two transactions we just built to Antonio Siliri right and then if you choose unbuild all right, so all of the Antonio Siliri transactions are all uh, built already. So if you choose unbuild in here, uh, no transactions is going to show up. So if you choose build, the two transactions will show up. Let's just wait for it to load. And then I'm going to choose unbuild. And I'm going to look at the other um, customers. So Missy Cooper. All right, so we have three transactions. And we can also, we can also filter by description. So... If you wanna choose, um, if you wanna locate certain transactions using text, so let's say uh, cable. Okay, so I'm gonna type here C A B, just the clue, this just the clue text. Okay, I'm gonna press enter, and it's gonna filter just the cable wires. All right, so I'm gonna delete this one, and then let's say uh, extension. So E X T, enter. It's gonna show you extension. All right, and also the dollar values. Right. So let's say um, I want to see everything from a uh, hundred dollars to six hundred dollars. So I want to put here one hundred dollars to six hundred dollars. So essentially, the one with thirteen hundred dollars will not show up. Okay. So I'm gonna press enter, and the thirteen hundred dollar would disappear. All right. So let's try it with the other customers. So unbuild, and I'm going to choose uh, Texas Barbecue. All right, so we have three transactions for Texas Barbecue. Uh, I want to want to find something that says PVC pipes, so I'm going to type here PVC and press Enter. So it's going to filter everything that has the word PVC in it, uh, or pipes, or anything. All right. 
uh, okay so let's say dry wall dry wall all right so it filters only the description with ha that has dr the word dry wall in it okay so I'm gonna delete this one include everything and let's try the the dollar range so I'm gonna choose uh, transactions ranging from um, let's say fifty dollars to uh, five hundred dollars all right so there you go so it, it has all of the filtering functions we need it also has a billing progress bar right on the right side and if you want to work on let's say you have the list right now and then you want to we want to find this inside Quick, quickbooks online and start billing this to the customers you can also use this uh, check boxes so to, so you can track which ones you already finished and it actually gives you the more or less the projection of uh, how it's going to look like after you bill all of these transactions so once you you're done with all of the check boxes you just click on this button right here to uncheck all of the boxes so you can actually filter this in five different ways so it's very very useful and if you want to use this template i'm going to make this available to the, the public and i'm going to put a link to this on the description down below all right so once you're done working on all of these charges and creating invoices for the customers and you're you're basically done with everything uh, now what you what you want to do is go back to quickbooks and refresh the the report make sure that the date filter function is on all dates so you want to include everything from the beginning you extract another report copy the same uh, table into this tab and then you have the updated uh, transaction list okay that's it thank you guys for watching and i hope this video helps a lot of you guys out there and please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video